first of all. you are a conductor. This is great. I mean, you're very, very natural. I mean, I'm not surprised because, you know, the first time I conducted an orchestra, I hadn't ever conducted an orchestra, but I thought I felt I had, like you, right? And so actually I, I lied to the lady who hired me when she asked me whether I was very experienced. I said, oh, very. <laughs> of course, I hadn't conducted at all, but Google didn't exist in those days, so she couldn't look it up. So, but I knew, like you, that music was in me physically, and I could do it, and you're the same. So the moment you started, even before you started, the players said, yes, we can do this, right? It had the feeling, this is going to be great. All right. And that's what happens if for a conductor is actually happens before the very first note. It, it's, I once asked a, a musician in an orchestra, I said, when can you tell that you are happy to play with an orchestra? And they said, five seconds before they begin. <laughs> right? And you got that, terrific. <laughs> so now, interpretation. Uh, let, let me ask you, what, what about this first bar? Is it a downbeat or an upbeat? Um, I feel it's an upbeat. It's an upbeat. All right, great. It's very unusual. Yeah. Very few pieces begin with upbeats. The reason we know it's an upbeat is because when we get to the first ending, should we just do that? Let's everybody do the first ending. And let's say right on the first ending. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And it's in four bar phrases, right? So we try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But you see what that first bar, that last bar, is the, exactly the same yeah. as the first bar. So I would recommend that you don't make a written under <laughs> so that everybody understands that the first bar is an upbeat. So do the first ending again. And the thing to think, and you're doing this, which is wonderful, is you're thinking not in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but rather one, two, three, four. So this is in four bar phrases. And that's so different than if you feel it in three, you, you divide every bar from the other. Whereas this way you create a phrase with four bars in it, or another way of thinking, four beats in it. So we try that. I would suggest you don't even think of doing the beats okay. here. Just do, let's do it together. Do it. There we go, right? So that proves beyond any doubt that Bra Brahms was thinking of the first bar as an upbeat. That means that it would be good to get the cellos and basses to play with an up bow. Right? Okay, yeah. right? So that it would be a, a, is what we do when we played it. That little figure, da da da, becomes the acorn out of which he builds the whole oak and it's constantly there da, 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 everywhere you look and the other thing da, 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 da. when you think of that theme what do you think of what is the image you have for that maybe because i know it is a very countryside austria yes I austrian countryside yeah. he he wrote this in a village which he said there were so many melodies ri lying around in the in the grass that you had to be very careful not to step on them i mean <laughs> it was that it had that open air feeling and you've got that if you can be even more generous with it because horns are very generous instruments uh, they want to be like an embrace. And Brahms was about 280 pounds. So if you get a little bit more weight into your body. Can we do that again with the upbeat at the beginning? From the beginning. From the beginning, yes. Because we've, we've done the first ending. Now we understand the opening. 
Anybody who thinks that the first bar is a downbeat has misunderstood this piece. Is it a matter of opinion? No. It is not a matter of opinion. Brahms has made it absolutely clear. So if you go to a concert and you see the cellos and basses beginning on a down bow, try to get back to the box office to get your money back <laughs> before it closes. <laughs> right? But if you see all the cellos going, Lord, 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 and the more you can get them to move that way, Lord, 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 try that. Can I suggest, can I suggest, there's two ways of doing this. One is like this, play, play the horns, which is what you're doing, or like this, play together. You see, by, by giving a little bit more physical energy, they realize that you want them to make it warm and full and loving and rich and gorgeous. So we can, can you do rich and gorgeous? It's a little, it's a little, it's a little timid. You want to begin with generosity. So if you, I, what I do is I think one, two, three. Still in one, but with a warmth and richness in the sound. So try it again. Try to imagine you were 220 pounds. Okay. All right. Hard to imagine. Right? Hard, to, hard <laughs> to imagine. But if we're playing music of a composer who thought big, we have to think big. And it's all in the brain anyway. Weight is in the brain. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's confusing. That's confusing because they got two beats. There's only think to yourself one, two, now three. So don't conduct the third bar. Think it and then do the fourth. Beautiful, you're great, you're great. But can you think of a little difference of the sound of the third and fourth horns playing in E rather than the D major? So when that comes in, in the minori, mm -hmm. right, there, yeah. can you make it richer, warmer, fuller, more, 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 just warmer? Everything about Brahms is warm. Can you do You're doing beautifully. Do it once again. And before you start, listen for the sound before they play. Listen for the sound and then get the sound that you want you have in your ear. Try it again. Valida makes, made a mistake. Valida almost never makes a mistake, but she did. And we have a rule in our organization throughout that if somebody makes a mistake, we say, how fascinating! Because the trouble is that mistakes cause people to get very anxious. And it's a, this is a general thing for conductors. If you made a face, and say, oh, like that, she would start thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get fired, I'm going to lose my job, how am I going to feed the children, you know, all of that <laughs> downward spiral. Instead, if you say, how fascinating, everybody says, okay, that's over, never mind, it won't happen again. All right, beautiful, okay. thank you. And she'll never make another mistake again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Because what I think you need to think is, uh, let's do it together. One, two, three, four,
Can I just say a word to the pianist? You're really violins, right? So play inside the sound of the violin if you can, less like a piano. Your strings, right? But do you see how you have to feel all the time pulling apart and always thinking in four bar phrases? So each bar is a beat in a four bar phrase. We get it? One more time. Yeah, if the orchestra plays wrong, it's usually the conductor's fault. So this was a little confusing what you did. Can you just go from the timpani roll? You know where that is? Mm -hmm. That's the first bar of a phrase. Then the trombones come in on two, three, four, and they're joined at that point by the flute and clarinet. Yeah. So you got that? Mm -hmm. So let's do that. It's, uh, um, it's actually fl flute and oboe. So just do from the timpani roll. Yeah, that's a bar before you come in. You remember the timpani is a very stunning sound. It's, it's mysterious. It's from the back of the woods somewhere. Otherworldly sound. Uh, should we just try that? Timpani. A, a little ominous, do you know, like fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Can you do the timpani over there? Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, timpani like this. Now you turn to the trombones and say, Boah. No, no, do the timpani, Tim timpani. And two, three, three, timpani. Trombones. There you have to watch because we're going to take a little time. All right, so we do timpani. Can you be ominous? Yeah, I don't get timpani. Trombones. is one of the great most, the first D major chord we've had with a resolution, it's home. Everything up till now has been an upbeat to that moment. And it's very, very special. And before it, oh, we're home, D major, right? Good. Now, there's lots to think about. You've got the sound of the horns. You've got the E minor sound of the third and fourth horn. You've got the warmth of the cellos. You've got the flutes floating up. It's all in four bars, phrases. You've got the timpani roll, the grandeur of the, the trombones, the magnificent. And then the beautiful oboe, dee, oh, it, oh, and of course da da da. That's da 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 di. Same thing. Always that that tonic with the with the 
with a leading tone which goes everywhere. So, should we go from the beginning? Okay. And if you do it from memory, by which b I mean by heart, you can look, but by heart, and make every moment special. So nothing sounds ordinary. And one of the problems you have here is that the pianists are playing like pianos mm. instead of like strings and wounds. So you have to pay, pay particular attention with your hand to get them to be very f fluid and not percussive. Okay, okay, great. From the beginning. Three, remember, two, three. Beautiful, bravo, bravo, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It was great, it was great, it was great. So much more informative than when you began. Right? Now, do you think I'm just going to say, fine, go home? No, I'm, we're going to do it one more time. Okay. All right. And the reason is because when a conductor gets into what I call automatic pilot, orchestra players turn their minds off. After a while, they see the same thing, and they, get, they don't get interested. They say, oh, I know this piece, and then they just play. So in order to get their attention, you actually have to be doing something all the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, you're just being this beautiful thing, just floating along, and they close off. Mm -hmm. So I, we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And this time, we're going to get, it's great what you're doing, but more, more information, more difference, for instance, you do di da da di. When you think of it, the di da is the end of the previous phrase. Yeah. Isn't that right? Because it's being di da 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 di. So if you could separate the first D from the C sharp and make it an upbeat to the horns, that would be great. Right, so that's the first thing. The other thing, look, see, my hands are going through molasses in order, heavy. And I'm saying with my face, God, this music is beautiful. And the horn players sit there say, he obviously likes this tune. And they give back the same love that I'm giving them. If I do this, they'll give me what they ordinary give. But it's not enough for a conductor to accept what is ordinary about what they get from the orchestra. Do you get that? Yeah. So you've got to ask of them something beyond what they would give without you. Otherwise, you should stay home. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. So think as you're going all the time, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want to hear? And another thing is, the heavy light. There's another thing. Sounds as though it should lead to the high note, but actually, it's a heavy bar. And now come the horns, those rich, full third and fourth horns. I want to see something grand and noble and ah, just warm and special. Right? So every moment something. And when you get to the pizzicato, you know the pizzicato, timpani and double bass pizzicato, mm -hmm. Like that. 
So they feel, first of all, when it is to be together, and second of all, with portentous amazement. And then the oboe, and then the violin, thank you for playing a D major chord, and then a subdominant chord, so beautiful. Right, so we would do it again, and give everything, everything you have in your mind, give to the players so they get maximum information all the time. It's going to be great. Are you excited? Yeah. Fantastic. If you're not excited, they won't be either. Isn't that interesting? Their excitement depends entirely on yours. Right? So one of the most important things for a conductor to give to an orchestra is enthusiasm, love, what you've discovered, this sense of discovery, this sense of, oh, this is so beautiful, right? Yeah. Wonderful, from the beginning. Think four bar phrase. Yes, now we're talking. Great, great. <laughs> now, when you're playing without the music, don't play it from memory, play it by heart. That means whatever you have discovered is in your heart and mind, and you're revealing it to them, not remembering what's in the music. Do you understand the difference? Beautiful. Here we go. And you know what? They're excited too, because they want to find that. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And I love your smile. You're just amazing, absolutely fantastic. And look, 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 look at the smile on the face of the musician. He's right. When the, when the eyes of the musicians are shining, you know you're doing a great job. 
because they get to play with a lot of mediocre and <laughs> boring and, and when somebody comes along like you has so much to give it's a joy I mean it's an absolute joy and there, it's a revelation so um, this tempo change is mm -hmm. tricky he doesn't say very much about it there's no tempo markings no metronome markings anything he just says you know poco ritenuto so wham bari da dum ba bam now there's another passage in the Brahms violin concerto you know the one i mean da 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 yam ba da dum ba dum ba dum bidim can you remember that dum ba di right that's the one right it's almost identical and so is the allegro monontropo of the first movement because da 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 di and and thing da di da di the opening of the violin concerto is almost identical so if you're thinking what how do i get that tempo think of the violin concerto and think of dum ba ba da dum Bobby, what I love about what you're doing is you're understanding that sometimes you have to be in three and sometimes you have to be in one, but essentially it's all in one. Mm -hmm. I love the way you did the second theme because you're not only a great flutist and a great mm -hmm. jazz player, you're a great dancer. Mm -hmm. And this is dance music, isn't it? It's waltz. It's a, like, a, like a Viennese waltz and you've got that feeling fantastically. Do that again um, and let's see if we can get into the poco... Ritenuto. Uh, can you do the few bars before the second theme? Yeah, yeah there. Right there. Can, can, you make, can you make the crescendo happen through that so they see that each note is louder than the last? Do that again. Can you, when just before you begin, can you make your face like an invitation rather than like, are we going to get this right? Because if you do that, they're going to pick that up. What they want is the invitation to the dance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because do it again, let's do it together. One, two, two. Mm -hmm. You just hold it as long as, as, long as you want. Okay. All right, try it again. I just want to put on record how lucky we are that we have Elizabeth, who wasn't planning to play and is the managing director of this entire organization, but took out of your own play. Because without her, this would be nonsensical. Because for one thing, it's wonderful. The cello is above the viola. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's very, very rare. The cello and the viola playing together, a duet. But instead of putting the viola on top, which is the higher instrument, she puts the and the other thing I want to say to you is you have two very exceptional musicians here and so you, if you had 12 cellos you'd have to help them more to make that three one that feeling of, of uh, the, the, the pulse of the walls this is a Viennese walls I had a very interesting conversation with a very great musician um, uh, who most people know, Colin Davis was a great conductor and, and he did this piece in the, um, with the Boston Symphony. I went to the concert. He was a friend and so I went to see him afterwards. In the concert he conducted it like this, just do that right on the walls itself. That's how he conducted it, in three. In fact, he conducted the whole first movement in three, the entire thing. 
And I went back to him afterwards, and, and he said, how did you like it? And I said, I thought it was very boring. He was qu quite taken aback because he's very famous. But uh, he said, why? Well, I said, no, it's a waltz. And I went to the, I went to the piano, and I, and, I, and I said, look, it's, it's, a, it's a Liebeslieder waltz. <laughs> And he said, that sounds like chamber music, not orchestra music. And I said, what's the difference? There's no difference. So to get a whole orchestra to do that, you actually have to work quite hard. Mm -hmm. right, should we do that? Sure. Great. And, and pull up the whole, the, you've got 60 string players dancing. All right, are you ready? Same place. <laughs> Same place, yeah. Four before, why did we do four? And then be very aware of the viola, right? He held back for the bum bum he da. Where does he come back to the tempo? Where is the place? Because I think it's dum bum 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 bum. So you have to inform them of that. And the way to do it is just before the first beat, give the upbeat in a faster tempo, and they'll pick it up immediately. That was great. It was great. You're fantastic. You know what I want you to do? I want you to be a conductor. I really do. Yeah. So we have to make that possible now. So look, flute is great, jazz is great, but this is fantastic. And there are not that many people with your heart and your spirit and your warmth and your natural gift out there doing this. So let's make it possible, somehow. Do you agree? Do you agree? <laughs> right. And you know, you, you, come, you come from a country where music is so deeply embedded in the psyche of the people. I don't know anywhere on the planet where people, I mean, people even walk down the street as if they're dancing, you know. In Cuba, everybody's dancing all the time. Isn't that right? Yeah. And it's in your natural blood, so it's not an effort for you. It's completely natural, and the musicians pick it up. I mean, I'm putting words in their mouth, but I know what's in their mind. Partly because I can see their faces, not, not mine, the mask. But, but it, isn't that beautiful with the cello and the viola? That's as beautiful as music gets. There's nothing in jazz as beautiful as that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there is. But anyway, just give away what you have and let's find a path for you which leads to being a conductor, whatever it takes. Yeah. Okay? Thank Great, you so much, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you.